getting professionally sounding audio, studio quality has always been a challenge. Until now. This is what the audio is gonna sound like when you use this free, fast, and accessible to anyone feature that I'm gonna show you today. Not only am I gonna show you how to access this feature for free, I'm gonna do multiple tests where we run through AirPods, camera audio, scratchiness on the mic, P's and B's where the audio waves are gonna spike, and even your normal microphone headset audio. And then finally at the end, I'm gonna show you how you can take that enhanced audio to the next level with two free plugins in Final Cut Pro. Watch till the end of this video to see all the amazing tips and tricks on how to get perfect audio. These comparisons are gonna be fun because you're gonna get first-hand hearing of what the AI tool sounds like. For this test, we're on a standard camera. We got a busy road to my left, we got water, we got birds, we got crickets. We got so much sound around us. Let's switch on the audio tool. And what's cool about this test is you're gonna to get to hear what that audio sounds like before even I do. So I want you to put in the comments what this AI tool is doing to the audio, if it sounds better, worse, or the same. For this next test, and I'm super excited about this one, we're using Apple's Gen 1 AirPods. Let's go and switch it on. And we're just gonna talk normally. Gen 1 AirPods are notorious for being really bad audio quality, so I am so curious to put this into post-production, show you how to do it, and hear what it sounds like. Drop in the comments like you guys have been doing, put AirPods, better, worse, or exactly the same with the tool on versus off. For our next test, we're just using the iPhone 12 Pro's audio. Now, the ceilings are relatively high. I'm six foot and I can't touch the ceiling. We don't have any sort of audio padding, professional equipment, or anything of the sorts in this room. This is a relatively echoey room. I'm gonna go ahead and also get a bit further away from the microphone. So if I stand back here, what does that audio sound like with this tool switched on? If I'm walking around as well and maybe uh, just moving back and forth from the microphone. Again, this is just an iPhone, no fancy equipment, nothing of the sorts. Let me know in the comments what you think. Now this cannot be a comprehensive audio trial without using the trusty old Apple wired headphones. And this is what this test is on. Let's go ahead and turn that tool on and put it in our shirt. Now, I've even used this tool on professional shoots, and sometimes we get that audio rubbing sound of the microphone rubbing against the clothing of the person or the skin of the person. What does it sound like now, guys? I have no idea. What does it sound like to you guys? Drop it in the comments. And sometimes we get those poppy, poppy sounds. I cannot wait to hear what it sounds like with this tool switched on. And lastly, what if we put this into our ear and we're just talking to you guys like normal? I hope, fingers crossed, this is a great representation of what this AI tool is capable of. And now what about a professional studio microphone that doesn't have a pop filter? How does that sound? How does it sound when we spike the audio wave? So I'm gonna just do some pops. I apologize in advance. Let's see what this tool can do. Peter Peter Pumpkin Eater had a wife but couldn't keep her. He put her in a pumpkin shell and there he kept her very well. Peter Peter Pumpkin Eater had another and didn't love her. Peter learned to read and spell, and then he loved her very well. Hmm. Curious to see how that went. For this test, we're going to be comparing those cheap wireless Bluetooth microphones that you get from Amazon. Here we go. Five things school didn't teach you, but I will. Don't save money in the bank. Compound interest. The rule of 72. The 1020 rule. The 50 30 hmm. 20 rule. Interesting. I have no idea what it sounded like. Let me know. Now, finally, I'm sure the moment you've all been waiting for, here's how you access and use this tool. Go to podcast.adobe.com forward slash enhance. That link is gonna be in the description for you to easily click on. And this is the site that it takes you to. If you wanna access this enhance site again, go quick tools and go to enhance speech. If you don't have an account, go ahead and create an account. You can see there's mine. And here we are on the page where we see speech enhancement makes voice recording sound as if they're recorded in a professional studio. Remove noise from voice recordings with speech enhancement. And this test right here is absolutely incredible. I would highly recommend that you listen to it when accessing the page. But let's see how we use it. All you have to do is drag and drop your audio or click the upload button, find the audio file that you wanna use and click open. Now, I highly recommend using Google Chrome for this as sometimes Safari doesn't work quite as well. But once you upload your file, you'll see enhancing speech. And this can take up to 10 minutes to enhance depending on the length and quality of your audio. Once it's done processing, 
all you're gonna do is go download. It's gonna save it pretty much instantly. And let's go over to Final Cut Pro to show you how to import it correctly and the final tweaks that you can do to enhance that audio even further. So straight from your downloads or from the folder that you saved your audio to, go ahead and drag and drop that in to your project. Now, make sure that your waveforms are perfectly aligned. So if we go and play that, now finally, that sounds perfect and it's perfectly aligned. I like to check it a couple times just to make sure that I am in sync. Once I am, all you need to do is drop that audio from your original audio and you have the enhanced audio playing in the background. Now, for those who don't know how to export audio, it's very simple in Final Cut. Set your in and out points for what audio you wanna export by clicking I and O respectively. Go File, Share, Export File, go Settings, and change your format to audio only. Now for shorter projects, I would recommend exporting in WAV, but for longer projects like a podcast, I would recommend exporting in MP3. That is because we get a 500 megabyte max size and one hour max duration per upload. Now a WAV file of one hour is gonna be over 500 megabytes in size, so you won't be able to upload it. And also take note that you get up to three hours total per day. Again, just to summarize, for shorter recordings, I'd say under 20 minutes, export your audio in a WAV format that's gonna give you the highest possible quality. And for longer formats, over 20 minutes, go MP3 and that's gonna drop your file size. So now you have this enhanced audio. What do we do with it in Final Cut? Click on your audio, go to your effects, and what I want you to search is compressor. All you need to do is double click the compressor what this does is it essentially limits your peak points and your low points and evens out your audio so you get a more stable sounding audio without too many fluctuations in decibels. Very quickly, if we go and turn our compressor on and off, you can see that our total waveforms increase, showing that the loudness has increased, but also we can see that those waveforms are relatively easy across the entire board they're all pretty much hitting that bass line right there. Now, the second effect we're gonna use is something called channel EQ. Search channel EQ in the audio tab and double click that. It's gonna apply it to your audio. And now what you can do, and this tool is really cool because this is one of the cons of using this Adobe tool, is sometimes the audio comes back sounding a bit damp. It sounds like it's very monotone or there's we're speaking through a wet towel or speaking through a wet blanket. Let me just take you back here. We're gonna click those tools right there. And these are our frequency toggles. So over on this side, we have the high pitch and over on this, we have the low pitch. So let's just quickly listen to our audio. What you have to do is drag and drop your audio. Perfect. What we're gonna do is widen this back piece and drag it up slightly. Now this is gonna increase the bass in our audio. Or click the upload button. And now we're gonna do the same for the top half. We're gonna widen this function right here by clicking that circle, drag it, and drag this up. This is gonna increase our high frequencies. If we go ahead and toggle this off and on, and you can hear that audio sounds more crisp now than it did without these small little tools. If we dramatize that and drag it up a lot, again, it sounds a lot more crispy clear and like we have those high pitched tones. This is a bit too much for me, so I'm gonna go ahead and drag that down, but it's definitely sounding better. And those are the two tools that you can quickly apply in one minute or less that'll take that enhanced audio to the next level. Guys, we're in the last segment of our video, the conclusion. Straight off the bat, I hope you found this informative, helpful, educational, and you learned some things that you can use to take your audio to the next level. But let's run through some of the things that we learned while using this tool. Sometimes the audio coming straight out of Adobe Podcast sounded a little dull and flat. Now that can be easily remedied by using that channel EQ function that I showed you and just pushing up the lower end and the lower frequencies and the higher frequencies in your audio. That's gonna give you a rounder, crisper audio. In the case where our audio was natively captured in a terrible, terrible way, like during the AirPod test, the audio came back from Adobe Podcast sounding extremely digitized to the point where it didn't even really sound like my voice. Now, even if you use the compressor and the channel EQ tools, the odds are you're not gonna get that audio sounding that great like it is sounding now. 
So what do we learn from that? What we learn is try and capture your audio in the best possible way while recording. Now, you don't need a fancy tool, don't get me wrong. For instance, on the camera, we had so much background noise. We had crickets, birds, water, air, wind, not air. And what the tool did was it reduced all of that down and it actually came back sounding super, super good. So you don't need a fancy tool, don't get me wrong. You don't need a fancy tool to make it sound incredible. Now, something else that I discovered while editing this is sometimes when I left the original audio on by, let's say, minus 10 dBs, for instance, in the iPhone case, the audio actually sounded better. And I believe this is because the original audio has some of those higher frequencies, lower frequencies, and middle frequencies as well. So just having a bit of that original audio in the background actually gave the entire audio and enhanced audio a fuller feel. These are things that you're gonna to have to play with when you edit and find what workflow works best for you. In this case, we tested a lot of different input devices like our AirPods, our camera, our phone, and therefore you're gonna to have to test what works best for you based on the device that you're capturing it. Now, some positive conclusions from this. I cannot tell you how much Adobe Podcast reduced the scratchiness and the pops from the recording, guys. The pops and scratchiness, the pops being from when I was popping in the mic, and the scratchiness from being when I was putting that wired earphone microphone into my shirt were absolutely intense, guys. I was actually considering writing something on the screen saying I apologize in advance, and I'm sure you got a bit of taste of that. But the amount that this tool reduced it was absolutely intense. And if I can say my most positive two devices were one, the camera audio again, because it was so loud outside and it really reduced that to be absolutely incredible. And the second one was the $5 Amazon microphone. You guys got firsthand experience hearing that that Amazon microphone really wasn't that great. It actually sounded pretty terrible in the original audio. But what was brought back and downloaded from Adobe, that audio was insane. It honestly sounded like we were recording that in a studio, but we were walking outside on a roof with a busy road underneath. Absolutely incredible. Finally, there is absolutely no replacement for a good microphone, but this tool can drastically improve the audio quality in cases where you don't have a good microphone. Guys, that is gonna be it from me today. If you found this video informative, educational, and helpful, it would mean the world to me if you could leave it with a like, drop a comment with your thoughts, and subscribe to the channel. And I wanna thank everyone who has been subscribing to the channel we have just grown like crazy over the last two weeks. And it is amazing to see everybody coming into this amazing community where we share knowledge and learn cool things. Guys, that is it for me. Have an incredible day, my friends, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.